before where you started, give you time to like mention where you, you know, give me your little background. Sure. How you started and then some of the things you were doing in the past, how you were bringing on partners instead of raising. How much money have you raised now about, you know? Well, we're probably over three million now. So oh. yeah, we just had a, another good round uh, oh. over the last two months. So it's been going good. Awesome. And why we're doing this, like I said, I, I love to showcase people who have done a good job with the raise, raising private money course. And when we showcase this, what happens a lot of times, just so you know, our, because a lot of my lenders are on here. And if I'm showcasing it, you might get hit up by someone. And I'm cool with you taking that. You know, that's why I'm doing this. I wouldn't ever do this if I didn't trust you taking that money. Right on. Um, the money. So I'm going to talk about what you did in the course, how it changed you, how it changed for you, how you used to do it, what you're doing now. And then I'm going to ask you at the end, I'm going to ask you about your, um, your, your vision. And then I'm going to ask you about your, um, your, uh, shoot, I'm trying to blank. Uh, give me three, you know, three, um, or, you know, um, I, 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 like your core business model, three, uh, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank. Holy shit. Um, hold on a second. Okay. I'm drawing a blank here real quick. It's not good. Um, get three. Hold on a second. Why am I drawing a blank? All right, your core values. I'm going to talk about a little bit of core values that have, like, nothing to do with money. Sure. So, some of your core values. Uh, that you would like leave to you know generations below you and stuff like that. All right, so we'll get going and then we'll record this and I'll get I'll give it out to you. You can play it. I'll we'll put it on YouTube and we're putting a lot of time and money behind YouTube and we'll we'll nail it for you. So it's going to drip campaign for you. So it's going to be good. Awesome. Okay. But I just want I'm just sick and tired of people not taking action on rapes and learning how to raise private money. So um, I'm going to showcase like up to like five five of the best people have done it. All right, let me. Uh, let me go live. I'll tell you when we're about to go live. And we're to come. It's the most advanced comms game, man. Okay. Should take two minutes. Two minutes. Let me set this up. Again here, here from my top units, students, then graduates, changes the life, I just don't do it. Have you closed with that? How many deals have we closed? About, about how many assets have you bought? That's the minute. Don't have exact. I don't know. Uh, probably close to 400 now. 400 assets. Utilizing. That's freaking awesome. I am stoked. I don't watch this, but I'm, dude, I'm freaking stoked for you. Thank you. You've been like, you seriously been like one of the best I've, I've worked with on this. I mean, you, you did it all. I just gave you the tools. That's, I don't take credit for it. I just, you know, everybody else has the same tools and doesn't use them. So yeah, well, that's the separator. That's, you know, that's why I tell people I'm, I'm not a genius, man. I just give you freaking tools. But I mean, out of, out of probably 200 plus people, I'm going to say maybe 15 of them have been have been awesome. I've crushed it. All right. We're going to be going off here in a second. Ready? I'm ready. All right. We're recording now. Hold on. Good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon. Um, we're going live here with uh, one of my one of my favorite people to have on, and uh, I'm not going to give too much of him, but I just want to tell you, someone Ben, Ben and I know each other. I'm going to say probably four or five years at least, if not longer. 
Ben and I started uh, going to events together. Ben was somebody who was underwriting seller finance notes for owner-occupied borrowers. Um, he was at the trade shows. He was um, somebody that him and I had the same mindset and had this passion for the business for a while. And we started talking over and over again. And Ben was just, you know, looking for a change. And I'm going to let him tell the story a little bit. But just so I give you a little bit about Ben. Ben is the uh, he, he was in the financial industry a little bit. Ben runs Odell Barnes REO. But where I'm going to say, and I'm going to let Ben talk about his life a little bit, is Ben is Ben came to me, and I'll tell the story. We'll talk a little bit about it. Ben came to me and said he has the opportunity to buy a lot of properties, but you know, raising money was a little bit of an issue for him. So Ben would come to me, and I'll tell you this, and Ben could attest to this. I was funding some of Ben's deals, right? And Ben and I were partners on the deals. We would we would net out, you know, pay pay me back, and then we would net a 50-50 split, 60-40 split, whatever it might have been. And even though I love working with Ben, and I, I, you know, my returns were phenomenal. I mean, phenomenal. Anybody else would have never done probably what I did and told Ben, Ben, why don't you just start raising your own money? Uh, stop paying me so much money. And you remember that story, Ben? Yeah, I do. Like Ms. Jeff said, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, I told Ben, why don't you start raising your own money? And Ben just at the time just didn't think he could. And I'm not going to get too much into it now, but I will in this conversation because he's probably my top, uh, I always hate to say student because Ben is an action taker. He just took what I gave him, the tools I gave him, and put it to work. So, Ben, I want to thank you for taking – I know you're busy. I want to take, thank you for taking the time out of your day to share with the group of what you've done. And, uh, and tell us, just tell us a little bit about, more about who you are, where you came from, and what you're doing now. And then we'll dive deep into questions and, and kind of, you know, really open this up for the group because I know you're somebody who has a great mindset. You don't have the scarcity belief that you don't share. It. You're, you're so willing to share everything you do with so many people. And there needs to be more people like like you. Not only that, you're um, an advocate for your investors. You've raised over three million dollars, done about four hundred transactions since we started this. So, man, you're you're top dog right now. I mean, I have people that have raised two million, uh, one million. I have people down to a hundred thousand dollars, but you have I've gone over three million, and probably three million in new money and just velocity. You probably used it for right? ten plus million. But tell people a little bit about who you are, where you came from, and what you're doing now, and then we'll dive deep into questions. Well, I, I appreciate you having me on, man. It's uh, uh, a pleasure always to sit and chat with you. But, uh, it, you know, I started out um, in real estate probably at the worst time, uh, you know, right at the uh, beginning of what was going to be the economic collapse. So at that point, I owned, you know, five or six rental properties and just bought them the wrong way. I was making a bunch of money working in the mortgage business with Lehman Brothers, and that came to an end. And I got what I thought was sort of forced into a, um, a career that I didn't want. So I went into financial services, uh, working for New York Life, um, and spent, you know, seven years there and then another couple of years working with Allstate. And I just hated it. So I, I was just desperate to get out of it. It just wasn't my passion. I think there's great things to be done in that line of work. Um, and I was able to do some great things um, that, you know, really made an impact on my life in terms of, you know, helping families and, and doing good things. It just wasn't my passion. And real estate was always where it was for me. And I had the problem was, is I had a confidence issue with when it came to real estate. So going from failing and having these rentals and having to basically start my entire life over um, right when I first got married. You know, and, and all these fun, you know, the best, what's supposed to be the best time of your life had become the most challenging time of my life. And then I just got stuck. And, you know, uh, finally it came up to a point where it happens. You just have enough and you reach a breaking point. And so I started to uh, dive back into real estate and just from, a, a, you know, just, immersing myself in education, really. So learning from uh, guys uh, around the industry, and thank God for YouTube. Like, if it hadn't been for YouTube, like if I'd been trying to do this in the 80s or the early 90s, forget it, right? Like I just, who am I gonna learn from? Unless you know somebody. So anybody that's in this generation where they have that as a resource, you're so fortunate. Like you don't, the speed of which you can go from nothing to something is just tremendous now. Whereas, you know, you look at somebody like yourself, 
you spent 20, 25 years like just developing and constantly working and learning, making mistakes and, you know, trying to, to figure your way. And so I just really took full advantage of that and immersed myself in as much education as I could. And then I started getting my mindset right. Like, all right, I have to redo what my entire brain of what I think I'm capable of. And that I, I would spend hours doing that. Like I would just immerse myself in podcasts, you know, from Andy Frisella, Ed Milet, Grant Cardone, all these guys that are just crushing it and saying, okay, what can I learn from them? How can I apply this? And it's not just listening to that information, but it's taking that information and then implementing it daily into your life. And so I'm a big believer in the law of attraction. And because of that, I started putting out into the universe that what I wanted. And I got a call, believe it or not, from a Craigslist posting that literally changed my life and got me involved with my partner, uh, Odell. And it's just skyrocketed over the last couple of years. And it, initially, it just started out with me helping investors do what I do now. So I took my mortgage knowledge and started applying it to the owner finance game. Uh, there was a big change in all the rules with Dodd-Frank and all that, which gave me an opportunity. A lot of investors look at that and say, oh, this sucks. This is no good. You know, it's going to be a problem. You have to change your mindset about that. And if I hadn't done that work on my mindset, I never would have been able to take advantage of this opportunity and then say, okay, how can I do that? And then start doing it on my own. And that's really the, the short of the last 15 years of my life transforming from being able to, you know, just be a, a financial services guy who hated everything he was doing to now I come to work excited every day. I love what I do. It's a blast. Real estate is so much fun. It's ridiculous. That's awesome. That's awesome. What, what makes real estate so much fun for like, I know what it is about me, but what makes real estate so much fun for you right now? Like why, why is it passion? It's a game. Like I, I said, just the way that I look at it, it's just a game. It's, it's fun. Like, and it's a, it's constantly learning. It's constantly evolving every day. You know, you're dealing with different people. So it keeps it interesting. Like it, I, I have ADD. So like if, if, if I'm not, if I'm focused on the same thing for an eight hour day, can't get through the day. Like it, it just goes sideways for me. But if I've got a bunch of different things working and, and me trying to adapt to those things, it keeps it very interesting and exciting for me. So for me, that's just it. I just look at it as a game. Like it's just a monopoly to me. It's fun. I was going to say, is that why we have Monopoly pieces behind you right now? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, that, that's literally I that. why I have that because it reminds me every day, this is just a game. So I don't take it. I take what I do very seriously in terms of, especially working with the people that I work with and my investors and all that, all that's very serious to me. But the, the daily routine of it, I just treat as the rules of a game. I just have to play by these rules and I will win the game. So... I know you're somebody who, who definitely invests in yourself. I mean, obviously, you were, you were somebody who, when I talked to you about this, about raising private money, and I said, you know, instead of partnering with me on every deal, and I think that was a mindset shift for you. I said, instead of sure. partnering with me on every deal, and I was coming up with money, and you were able to buy your assets, no problem, and you made money on them. And then when I came to you and I said, hey, you know, Ben, why, why don't you just learn how to do this yourself? Why don't you learn how to raise money? Do you think... Um, in the industry, and you see a lot now because you've been out there a lot now, and you're at events and you speak at events and you, and you work with a lot of people. Yeah. Do you think it's bigger? Um, the bigger issue is people not getting the education or not having the mindset. Where do you feel like people have failed at, or, or fail in their careers? Um, is it uneducated? Because yeah, like, you guys have YouTube. Like I didn't have YouTube back then. I didn't have these all these seminars. The seminars I had were like Carlton Sheets. Robert Allen, Russ Whitney, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, had Rob, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad books, but I didn't have 29 years ago. These Every meetup, every RIA group, every seminar, every day you can go to three seminars, you can meet people, you can learn on bigger pockets, you can learn on these Facebook groups like I have here. Um, you have, I mean, you're putting out a tremendous amount of value in, in your stuff, and, and I get your emails, and it's great value, your blog post and your Instagram, and we're going to talk about how people follow you. But what do you think? the biggest issue you see, because I know I have my thoughts on it, but I'd love to see somebody who's, who's come through pretty rapidly in the last few years. And, and, and I see is like, man, if everybody could be a Ben Fredericks out there. Um, and, and I see it because now, because you take, you take educate, you have actually invest 
you invest plenty of money in yourself, right? Yeah. You believe in yourself, you invest plenty of money in yourself. And you're at the point now where, like we said, you've raised over $3 million in new money and probably used it in velocity. I'm going to guess close to it, but not over $10 million because I know how, for me, I know how it goes when I raise money. I keep using the same money over and over again. Yeah. Um, what do you think the biggest issue you see out there with people? Because there's plentiful of information, right? And what I taught you in raising private money, and we talked about this briefly before we jumped online, is not, I'm not the rocket science of what I taught you. I just provided you the data that I use myself, but you put it into motion. What, what do you think you, what are you seeing out there? I think it's a combination of both, but I mean, you can, you can get all the education you want, but if your mind isn't ready to, to apply it and take action, I mean, that's really the separator. I mean, that's what we were talking a little bit about before we jumped on here today is like, you can teach a whole bunch of people how to raise private money. And you're probably going to, and there's, you know, if you have 30 people that you join, uh, join your uh, class, maybe only three of them actually ever take action. Well, why is that? You know, it's, it starts all up here. It's, they don't, for whatever reason, they don't believe that they can do it. So I think education is great, but one thing that I've definitely learned is not to get uh, over-educated where I'm taking in too much information from too many different places. Like I, I've, I've got two to three mentors. That's it. Like I, I just, I can't get distracted. And this is honestly, this is like the first time in my life for a long stretch of time where I've not been distracted by, you know, what I'd call shiny object syndrome, where I'm like, Oh, you should go do this. And then, you know, I spent a decade trying to do that to figure out what I was going to do. And once I got into it and started loving it, I was like, okay, blinders, they're on. This is, this is it. So, and yeah, so I think education is great, but if you're not committed to taking the action behind it, it, it's all pointless, you know? So you can sit and watch as many YouTube videos as you want and be a professional learner, but if you're not going to apply it, what are we doing? So you know, I had, I had somebody actually DM me. They asked me about, they were asking me about you and they said, you know, I'm thinking about taking this course and. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've taken other stuff and I just want to make sure I'm not, uh, you know, getting the same information that I've already paid for. And it's like, look, right. if you learn just one thing from anything, like it could pay for this a hundred times, a thousand times. So, and you mentioned something about me investing in myself. I mean, I, I probably invest, you know, close to 40 or 50 grand a year just in mastermind groups, personal development courses that I take to constantly try and improve that are, are actually applicable towards my goals. Right. So I don't, I'm, I think all education is worth it, but the question is, are you going to apply? That's exactly. all it comes down to. Exactly. And we see that, right? We see all these groups out there. I mean, geez, we're not going to get into policies, but you know, Trump had Trump university and he was being sued because people were failing at Trump university. And my thing has always been, if one person could do it, if one person could do it, it's doable. That's how, how I've, I've always looked at everything in my life. Yeah. If, it, if there's one person out there that can do it, it's doable. Um, yeah, I mean, you got, you got your fortune builders with like 80,000 plus people, I think now paying 40, 50,000 dollars a year. And there's some people that say it's great. There's some people that bash it. I'll never bash it because I know there are some very successful people there, right? It's just they took what they got and they did something with it. So I'm big and I think, I think why you and I align and what, you know, somebody not only consider, you know, somebody I've done business with, somebody who is a student of the training, but somebody I actually consider a friend of mine. Like, I, I can pick up the phone, we can, you know, hey, I'm going through this, what do you think? And, and I think we have that relationship now. Totally. Um, but there's so many people out there, right, that, that no matter what you give them, right, no matter what tools you give them, they're looking for a way for somebody to say, hey, it's not going to work, right? Um, and I, I want to jump back to something you said earlier. You said something that you, you changed careers when you, you just got married, right? You changed yeah. fields when you got married. How was your wife with that when you changed fields? Because this is another thing I see coming up as an issue with a lot of people. But how did your wife, how did, how was the interaction with you and your wife when you did this? You know, was she supportive, not supportive? Yeah. So when I came, uh, it, it's funny because my situation is somewhat unique to that. My, my wife was also working in the banking industry at the same time that I was. So she lost her job at the same time. And so I went into this field of financial services. My wife, you know, took another sales career for a couple of years and decided that she was going to go back to school. 
to become a chiropractor. So at the age of like 31, 32 years old, she's going back to try and become a doctor and I'm having to steer the entire ship. So I told her, when you're done, I'm out of doing this. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. I'm going to support you all the way through. I'm going to, I'm going to ride you like sea biscuit all the way through, you know, chiropractic school. And if you get done with that, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. So my wife was incredibly supportive. Um, you know, in the first couple of years, when you're an entrepreneur, man, that shit ain't easy. Like you're, you're battling like every single day is a battle. You know, you're trying to, to develop systems and you're trying to get business and, raise money and, you know, maybe hire somebody. And then there's a, you know, you're trying to figure out how to manage people and, and all these things that come along with this. So the first two years, she's like looking at me like, Hey, what's going on? Is this going to work out? And I was like, just keep the faith, just keep the faith. So yeah, I mean, it's incredibly important to have your, your significant other on board. Um, but you have to sell them on the vision the same way you have to sell yourself on the vision, your team, anybody that's involved with your business, you have to go home and constantly be selling that vision. Uh, and you got to believe in it, right? You're not totally. selling something you don't believe in. Yeah, exactly. It's like anything else. So you, yeah, you, once you feel like you're, you're, you're a used car salesman, not to put anyone down or anything, but once you feel like you're in that position where you're selling somebody, um, I feel like it's not the right fit for me. I don't ever want to feel like I'm selling somebody. I just want to provide a service. And ultimately, and I know you're the same way, I tell people I'm just a problem solver, right? That's all I am. I'm, I'm taking an issue and I'm, I'm solving, whether it's an investor that funds my deals, they have lazy money sitting around, uh, lazy assets sitting yeah. around, and I'm just going to help them put it to use. Whether it's an investor, I'm going to help them build up their portfolio, which you also do. You help people build their portfolios. I'm going to help them find the properties, rehab them, get them rented, manage stuff like that, just like you're doing. So I'm just solving a problem. But once I feel like I'm, uh, if I was ever in a position where I'm selling something, that somebody doesn't need, it just wouldn't feel good about it. It would be miserable. I wouldn't enjoy what I'm doing. Yeah. Because let's be honest. I mean, we've been involved in deals. I mean, not everything goes smooth, right? Not everything goes smooth. We'll never say that to anybody. Everything goes smooth. But the difference is, you know, you're the type of person that really goes above and beyond for your investors and for the people you work with. And I think that has to do a lot with why you raise so much money, right? I, I think it's. And we're going to talk about some of the things you've learned in raising money. Because I think that's what we want to share with people, so they believe they could do it too. Yeah. Because when we first got together, you didn't believe. I'll tell you, you did not believe you could do it. I mean, we. I, I remember our conversation like it was honestly like yesterday yeah. when we had the conversation, and you did not believe you would be able to raise the money to do what you were doing. You know, you were thinking so small at the time. Yeah. The, I think the most important thing for you was your mindset shift. Totally. Yeah. I mean, that was like the game changer on all levels, in every area of my life, whether it was you know, uh, building a business, whether it was, you know, making my, my relationships better, uh, my fitness, all that stuff. It, it, it all starts up here. I mean, there's no, there's no substitute. That's awesome. So let's talk a little bit about what you do, what you did different to start raising money after we, we started working together. What type of things did you do a little bit different? Um, and, and even go through steps. I mean, cause a lot of people on here, I'll tell you why I'm so, um, passionate about this raising private money and teaching it the right way. And I'm glad you told whoever reached out to you that if they learn one golden nugget, it's worth it. Because I see so many people, one is I see people doing it illegally, that they're yeah. going to get themselves in trouble. Right. That's one. Um, two is, even more important, they're putting their investors that fund their deals at risk. Yeah, That's more important. I mean, you take care of your investors before you take care of yourself. Right? That's, that's my right there. And then three is there's so much money sitting there not being used right now. And there's so many people doing things the wrong way. If you learn to do things the right way for people's money, it, money will never become an issue, right? So talk a little bit about what steps you've taken uh, since we started working together to actually start raising all that money you raised. Because it didn't, it's not a magic pill that something just happened. No, no, not at all. I mean, first, I, I think what helped me the most was just starting to get known. So, you know, going, I spent a lot of time going to expos and, you know, I had my booth for my mortgage company set up there and, you know, meeting people, networking uh, was really key. And then, you know, after you and I had talked and, and I started getting more intentional about getting known and having the conversation, you know, just going out and saying, hey, listen, this is what, letting people know what we do. Um, you know, so it wasn't anything like super complicated. It was just me 
voicing what we do. And this is how we help people and, and this is what we're trying to accomplish. And once it, it's a beautiful thing once you, you are able to raise a little bit of money because it begins to be almost like a waterfall. Because people, what happens? They start telling people they know, or you ha you start to build a track record that you can begin to build upon. Uh, and then we just started doing little things like, you know, we created this little booklet that we pass out and, you know, just talks about our deals. Uh, that was an idea that I got from you. Um, so just little things that we did and, and, you know, it would generate a conversation. And then, but ultimately I, I had all those years that I spent in financial services, Although I hated them, they, it wasn't what was happening to me. It happened for me. And because all that information that I learned in sales and how to, you know, find out what people's goals were really translated to this business because then I could have a great conversation with them. I was knowledgeable about stocks. I was knowledgeable about annuities. I'm knowledgeable about life insurance, all these different investment vehicles and I didn't have to feel like I, like you just said, I didn't have to feel like I was selling them on doing what we do. You know, it was going to sell itself once they saw the differences of how these different things work. Most people don't know, you know, they're just, they're so focused on like their, their regular career. If you raise money from a doctor, they're focused on being a doctor. Like they don't have a whole lot of time to come home and research all these different investment vehicles that are available. Right. So, it's so just one of the things I teach people um, is, you know, a lot of them are raising money. Like we were all at the same events, right? And I know, I know I, you've heard me say this because I probably said this a million times to every student I've ever had. It's we all we all go to these. They all go to these murky waters. They go to these real estate events, and I think that that's the place that they should be raising money. In. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, when you raise money at those events, what kind of returns are those people looking? What those investors at these real estate events? These mat these so called that drives me nuts. So called mastermind, like yeah, yeah. People don't even know what a mastermind is. The, the events we went to, you and I have been to with, uh, you know, Arate and that those type, and my other mastermind groups I go to, and you're in some other mastermind groups yeah. where I'm paying over 30000 a year to be in two of them each. And then I go to a couple of events. I'm six figures a year and where I spend money, my personal development. Why am I doing it? You know, it's mindset, a lot of it, right? And it's because I want to be challenged. I want to be at a upper, higher level. But I'm not in those events, and I don't even think you go to those events to raise money. No. Not where they have to. No. What are those those real estate events or those entrepreneur events? What kind of returns are they looking for in those events generally? Well, they're, they're like me. They're they're a little bit more spoiled. They want higher levels of returns. So you know, if I talk to somebody, their their expectation if they if they're educated and they know how to go out and make money in the real estate business, like for me, I don't get that excited if it's not a twenty percent return on my investment, just because that's what I'm accustomed to. Right. If somebody came to me and said, "Hey, here's a six percent." Uh, cap rate, I'm like, okay, well, that I'm not too interested because I can go out and I know what I can do with my own knowledge to create that kind of uh, velocity of capital. So there are certain there are certainly ways that that is workable, especially if you're a multifamily or turnkey rentals. That makes sense. But for me and what I do in my business, like if, if somebody presents me a deal, you know, and, and you see them all over the internet right now, right? Like so, wholesalers would bring you a deal. And you look at it and you're like, there's no money in this deal. So I'm, I'm very spoiled in that aspect. And so are a lot of investors that go to those events. So, you know, I, I think those are the wrong places to go. And, and I know it's what you teach in your training, too, is to talk to the people that don't have those super high expectations that are going to give you an ample opportunity to, to create something better. Oh, exactly. Exactly. A hundred percent. A hundred percent on that. Um, well, what what? Well, let's start this, right? Because because I want people to see, like, from you, guy who is in his, you know, got into this, was getting money, getting money possibly the way um, it wasn't best for you to really grow this business. Because I don't think on a long term, if I kept funding your deals, you'd see the benefit of the business the way you see it now. Right? Yeah. Because we were splitting deals, we were partnering on deals. It just, I mean, it was great for me. It was okay for you. It's great for me. You're doing all the work. I'm seeing, you know part of that, you know, most of the money, you know, because you're paying the bills and doing all the work. But what did you learn the most? Like, what got you the most results um, in raising private money? What did you learn the most at that point? Um, well, I mean, I think the experience probably taught me the most out of anything. So it was, you know, those first couple of rounds where you raise the money and you start seeing like, okay, this is very beneficial for 
my private money purse and, and it's still beneficial for me. Like it was great for me because I got my foot in the door. Um, but it does teach you to, to think, all right, how can I, how can I restructure? Who, who else can I talk to that maybe isn't expecting the same level that this private money person is because they're associated with the business. Um, so really it just taught me to branch out, you know, a little bit and right. start, you know, start talking to, to other people that were maybe not associated with real estate. Like they like the idea of real estate. It seems sexy to them and they're like, okay, well, I, I, I have money. I, I have, I know people that change jobs. I know people that recently retired. I just really started identifying a, uh, a, a, like my natural market more so than I had ever before. Most of the people I was going to were already tied to the business. So I stepped back from that a little bit and then just started, you know, all right, let me list And this. Again, this is something I learned in the insurance business was the first thing they had us sit down and do were write down a hundred people in our natural market. So I just started doing the same thing. I said, okay, here's the top 10 people I should be calling and just having a conversation with Invite them to coffee show them what I'm doing. If we're not uh, in a space to have coffee, let's FaceTime. I want to tell you a little bit about what I'm doing right now and see if there's an opportunity for us to work together in the future. So that was really it. I, I just kept it simple and started attacking it, you know, systematically, and, you know, with intention. Awesome. Awesome. And did you take, you took the, I saw you made a little pamphlet from the training. Did you what else, what do you think was the most valuable part of, of going through the training? That Because you took action. You were, you were definitely an action taker. I remember talking about it. Um, you didn't just skim through it and, hey, let me just go try this. You were, you were pretty intentional about doing each part of the training. Yeah. What do you, was the, uh, the biggest eye-opener in that private money training you took to help you and your business? Yeah, I think the pamphlet uh, was huge because at the time, what we were doing is we just had like a, a basic spreadsheet that we were using. Uh, mm -hmm. So it made us more professional. Like it was something that, you know, really almost like a, a prospectus. So, you know, that we used in financial services where we would go and, you know, show, hey, this is what this company is doing. This is why right. you should invest in this. And we it gave us something professional to present ourselves with that we're a real company. You know, this is what we've done. This is our, this is our vision. These are our core values. This is what's important to us. Um, and people can, you know, you said something earlier about, hey, I don't want to sell somebody. Well, you have to sell somebody on yourself because it, it, what we do is going to, it's going to sell it in its own way. Either you're, you're going to be involved in it or you're not. But if you don't believe in me and you don't believe in my core competency to get the job done and give you a return on your investment, that I'm ethical, that I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do, then it's a moot point. So I have to be able to professionally present myself in a manner. And that was one piece that I think I'd forgotten that, you know, I, I got it when I read your book. I mean, so you can get Dan's book. It's awesome. I've read it probably five times now. And, um, you know, just, he tells you exactly how to, to present, which is amazing. So, you know, but this, this little thing was, was just transformative because it made us that much more professional where we could, you know, be seen as an authority figure in the business. I'll tell you what, can you open that? Can you just flip through? Can, I, can you open it? Yeah. Let's see the inside real quick. Yeah. I don't have to go crazy with it. I just oh, bring it a little higher. Bring it up a little higher. Yeah. So we've got our, um, just an outline. We talk about a, a meeting objectives. If we're going to have a meeting with him, we show our key personnel, why people choose us, um, how our process works. And then we show some sample deals that we did. We talk about how we find buyers for our properties, our track record. We talk about this is all like this notes. looks like the bio that we, we put on our course. Plus, it looks like the PowerPoint presentation that we do at meetings. Exactly. All in one. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Yeah. I tell you what, you know, and that's why I'm bringing this out here, and I want I want to show, and I'm going to bring certain things out here that you did, because I think the pro it's not the problem. Most entrepreneurs and most investors out here have the knowledge, right? I mean, guys, you're online, guys, gals. You have the knowledge. You've done deals. I believe you do deals. I, I don't think anybody's in this group that's really unethical. We have people try to get in unethical. We pretty much cut them out pretty quick. And that's why we only do these webinars in our group. We don't do them publicly on our personal page because I kind of vet everybody who's in our group, right? And I think they have that knowledge. But the problem is they become entrepreneurs. They, they're doing like you and I, right? We have this. 
you have an ADD, I probably have ADD, I'm, but I'm very good at multitasking. But we don't want to take the time to actually make ourselves a professional. So we got to understand we're dealing with people who are doctors, lawyers, business owners, financial advisors, um, art auctioneers I have. Um, we have car enthusiasts. So these people might not think the way we think. We have to show them we're professional. And doing something like that, you know, and I'll, I'll say this because I'm going to bring probably, I'm probably going to do this with like four or five other people. And I, I'm not going to keep going. I'm going to kind of pick out the top five people who have gone through this course and pick them out. And I'm even going to bring some newer people on that have raised just their first 100000 to close the yeah. deal last week, right? which is awesome. Your first 100000 feels like you hit $100 million, right? That's, that's, yeah. that's, a, that's a badass feeling for sure. It is. When you actually – it works. When you actually go through the course, yeah. you do your first meeting right, with somebody, you do a presentation, and they're like, okay, so I mean, how do I fund your deal? Right? You don't ever have to sell them on a deal. They're selling you on how to fund their – how to be in your, in your program. Yeah. But – um, your first meeting you did, if you could think back to that, right? Yeah. I don't know how long ago it was, your first investor meeting you did. Um, what was that like? What was that like going into it? What was it like doing it? Um, how was it? Yeah, um, <laughs> it was, it's interesting it's to think like, back on like, it because. It's like a man coach type thing, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's interesting to think back on it because, you know, at that time I, I just really didn't know. A whole hell of a lot what I was doing it was just really just having a conversation like ultimately trying to figure out what they were gonna what they were wanting and it it actually uh, we raised a half a million off of that first meeting so you're just I like, remember. yeah and it and that became you know another half a million down the road so yeah man I you know well, let's stop let's I'm sorry to yeah. let's stop there so you're ready to half million or another half million and yeah. how much time frame was that from your first investor meeting? Uh, probably another 120 days after that. So um, total from from the time you started to the, to the time you raised that first million dollars, how long did it take you? Oh, um, gee, that was probably six months. I mean, our first private money person, who was a family friend of my partner, he invested about 140 thousand with us. So it was just taking that and working with it and establishing a track record. And then um, the meeting actually uh, came from somebody that I was helping in the note world uh, when I was, you know, doing the mortgage stuff. And, you know, they knew we were starting to acquire properties. They knew that I knew the business, that I knew how to create these notes and, and all that stuff. And we just were having the conversation and they, you know, wanted to get together and I, I thought, really, Dan, I, I didn't know it was going to be about private money, which is, is why it's funny to reflect on it. Like, I didn't go there with that intention. Like, I went there as they're a client of mine on the mortgage side, and they kind of brought it up to me, and I just knew at that time, I was like, okay, I can close this. Like, so it was just it was something that they had said, but... I wouldn't have known to do that, like if if I hadn't been able to identify like those those little questions that they were asking. So, like, what kind of return can you get on this? And you know, just like little things. How quickly can we get our money back? And you know, I was like, okay, this is a you have. If you're in any kind of sales, you can identify a buyer quickly just by questions that they ask, and then you have to know how to close them. So they, they usually close themselves at that point, right? They're, yeah. they're usually asking you, how do I get into your program? Right? That's right. Yeah. For the most part, they are closing themselves. But if you don't actually move them towards the close, it ain't gonna happen. So you got to get them to like take action now. Like, yeah, I want to do this, but you're almost having to like guide them along the way and say, okay, now now we do this, and you're walking them through the process. So that's, that. that's yeah, awesome. That's that's, that's essentially how it happened. It was almost kind of by accident, like really. I mean, but it, well, once you learn once you learn the skills, you have the skill sets. Um, it's not really by accident. Uh, and it's it's you don't realize it, but like your mindset shifts, yeah. the conversations you have shift when you do things the right way. When you talk about your deals, you don't start asking for money. The thing shifts. Everything we see going wrong on social media right now shifts. All the BS out there, all the people that talk about they're crushing it, all the people that are online saying, "Hey, who wants to make this much money on their money? They're raising money the wrong way." It, yeah. You, 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 I could look back on your feed. You could look back on my feed for five, ten years, whatever it might be, you'll never see us do things the wrong way. And when you do things the wrong way, um, right away people look at you a little differently. So just when we 
the, one of the big reasons I do the training, and I put this training together, because guys, I make my money just like you, Ben. You make your money in the business now. You don't make your money for selling courses. You don't make your money in that stuff. In fact, every dollar I make in selling courses goes into a fund. I think we talked about it, to build a financial literacy course for youth around the world. Yeah. Every book sale goes into that. It doesn't even go into my pocket at this point. Um, but I'm so proud. People are like, well, why teach this? Well, because I'm passionate about teaching this the right way. Okay? That's really what it's about. Um, and if people can't invest in themselves, if you can't invest a certain amount of money in yourself, which is very little, right? I mean, now our, our course is only nine ninety seven for raising private money. We ran a sale last week. It's a Halloween sale. We said, you know what? We had like a hundred. I think it was at, out of fourteen hundred people. I think over twelve hundred of them said their biggest issue was raising private money. That's why we asked those questions. We were yeah. like, you know, what? It, it kills me. That I would never. I'm never lowering the price of my course again. I'm just going to keep raising it, right? Um, I don't believe in coupon shopping, but I believe if you can't invest nine hundred ninety seven dollars in yourself to learn the right way to raise private money, when you're going to save two to four points and you're going to take your business from where you were at before, right? Where you were handing me fifty percent of the deal, and yeah. I loved it. I mean, I was making two, three hundred percent of my money, yeah. correct? Yeah. And I told you, I said, Ben, that you, I love you. You're, you're a good friend. I want to make this money, but man, do this the right way. And and this was probably like two or three years ago. You started. I'm thinking maybe two years ago. I think it was about started, yeah, eighteen months. Yeah, you started yeah. raising money, and boom, you hit me up, and it was like, dude, I just raised like this year over two million dollars. And now, you know, I'm comfortable saying you're probably paying six, seven, eight percent interest only, and you probably have the money a lot longer. And you, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and probably say I'm going to ask you, what is the minimum investment you take from somebody? Because I know when you first started, you probably would have taken twenty five grand, fifty grand, something like that. Yeah. And I was the same. Way. Now you're very picky on who you bring into your program, right? Very. Yeah. I mean, we we've got plenty of money at this particular point in time. I mean, it, which is a great thing to say, but I think, <laughs> I love that. People I think, don't believe that. yeah, I mean, it, you know, as well as I do, like one of the biggest challenges is when you've got a bunch of money to spend is actually spending, it. you know, because you don't want to, this is something that I learned from you. It's like, you don't want to have that call with your investor and say, I couldn't, I couldn't invest your money this month. Well, they could have done something else with that money, you know, so they're, they're entrusting you to get it working for them. So, yeah, that's I mean, big, and that's one of my biggest stresses. I just had a conversation before I was on the, uh, before you. I have an investor that I fund a lot of his business. So it's, it's a hedge fund out there. I fund a lot of their business. And I said, I just need to know where you stand because I have a lot of money coming into me from from my private lenders, right? And I fund a lot of his deals, and I just want to know where you stand because I always hear more a certain amount of money for you. And if you need it, I need to know. If you don't need it, I need to know because the worst thing. My stress, like your stress now, is not raising money. My stress is putting my money into good quality deals. Right. Now, listen, I could fund millions of dollars a week in business, but you know, most of the stuff I see is not even fundable. Why is I know like like I teach you guys, I know when you go out and you look for money, yes, you have your, your regulars now that you just see the text message, you put a call and say, Hey, I'm closing a deal, I need four hundred thousand, I need yeah. five hundred thousand. But you didn't get to that day one. No. You had a presentation. Right, you went through the presentation we showed you. You have a booklet that you gave them. You sat down with them. You built that rapport. You did everything you needed to do. You give them all the proper paperwork, right? Yeah. And that's how you raised your money, right? So now, tell me a little bit about what you look for in a partner to invest in your program. What would you look for if I'm a partner? What are you looking for from me? What are you telling me? How are you doing it? Yeah, I mean, I guess at the end of the day, I want to know like how involved they expect to be. Um, I want to know uh, what their comfort level is. So if I'm approaching you as a partner and, you know, I'm going to have the same exact conversation that you just were discussing, you know, how do you need this money? When are you going to need this money? What is this money for? So, you know, I want to know on a deep level what their commitment is. If they're like, well, I, I, I probably have uh, an expense in another year it might not be a good fit. So, but I'm going to have that conversation honestly up front, you know, saying, Hey, listen, it can take us, you know, six months to turn an asset, you know, and if we get caught at the wrong time, that might make it difficult for you to get access to your money. So I think just having those honest upfront conversations of, you know, in the beginning will, will serve you well. So, and then honestly, you might also find somebody that you don't want to work with, which has happened to us. And I say, you know what? It's not, it's not a good fit. So, and if you know what your culture is and you know, like your own set of personal values, 
you'll be able to identify those people pretty easily. So I think I always talk about the best deals, the ones you don't take, right? Totally. <laughs> yes. And that's a, yeah. that's a tough lesson that some people you have to go through to learn, you know? And I, I'm sure you, and I, actually, I remember a conversation you have gone through it and I've gone through it because I remember oh, when yeah. we're sitting there picking on nachos or, or tortillas, tortilla chips and talking about it at, in, uh, out in uh, St. Louis, yeah. we're talking about not to work with. And, you know, and when you get to this point, it's so nice when you get to this point. And that's why I teach uh, calling it your pro, it's your program, guys. It's, it's definitely your program. You choose who you want to work with, who you don't want to work with. And uh, once you have that, now you built yourself a business. Now, I don't believe at this point, didn't you say you just recently funded another big deal? Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we raised uh, some more money in the past two months, which has been great. So it just keeps going on and on. I mean, that that's one thing you have to be doing is constantly always be raising money. It's like always be closing, always be raising money. I mean, because sometimes partners will shift in and out, you know, so... Right. I mean, you know, you don't want to have to try and find when you've got a good deal, you know, you've got access to good deals. The last thing you want to be doing is like scrambling for, for capital. So you should always be trying to raise new, new money. Um, especially if you know, you can find deals all the time. So let me ask you this. What's the, if somebody's starting out raising money, right. And they're going through the training, you know, going through the same training you went through with me. Yeah. What is the one thing you would say that's they should really start with right away? I have a feeling I know what you're going to say, but uh, rather than me put it out there, I want to ask you, what is the one thing that you think they should start doing right away from the training? Um, that's that's probably most important to start with today. They're going to raise money and they have the training already. Yeah. Well, I think, first of all, they should probably master how to present. Like, if they just mastered your napkin talk, like, I mean, really, I mean, if they could figure out how to do that, just practice it over and over and over again until it's just second nature, like they could do it anywhere, you know? So, and I think that is a, a, a game changer for a lot of people because they just don't, people, a lot of people get, tend to get uncomfortable with the talking about money for whatever reason. It might've been how they're raised in my household. You know, you didn't, it was impolite to talk about money. You know, you didn't ask how much somebody made. You didn't ask like, you know, oh, you bought that house. How much was it? You know, you just, it was, it was like politics and sex. You didn't, just didn't talk about it. Right. So, you know, I think you have to get over that first and foremost. If that's an issue for you, I would tell you, get over it. And the way you can get over it is just by constantly practice talking about it. Go everywhere and don't be scared to talk about money. What things cost. I did a deal. I made money, you know, and there's no such, I don't think there's a, a there's levels of self-promotion that get weird, but if you go out and talk about yourself and things that you're getting done in a positive manner, and then you can show it, like not just talk about it, but be about it and be able to show it how you did it, that's the separator. Because a lot of people, they talk about all the shit they're doing on social media. I did this, I did that. Well, okay, maybe you did, maybe you didn't. But if you could show me actual deals that you've done or show me on paper, how this makes sense in a quick, concise manner that I can understand. It'll change everything for you. Like seriously. That, that, you're right. That's that, that, it's funny how you mentioned an napkin presentation. Uh, I don't do those napkin presentations much anymore. Um, one is I feel like they're, they're almost like uh, they're almost like a piece of art now. Right. And what happened <laughs> is I had all of a sudden it was like, there was a couple month uh, span where I was doing them and then people started framing them. They're putting them in their offices. And it was really cool. Some people on here might actually, if you have it, post a picture on there. You, you, I want to show you. People actually framed it. And I just, because I used to meet people at coffee shops, at diners, is that right? Yeah. And I would just take a, a napkin or the back of a diner a menu, a, a place mat, and I would just start drawing it out. And I raised so much money like that. This is This was back in the day. But like you said, be concise. Teach people how to do this business. If you teach people how you're doing your business, they're going to want to be part of it, right? So, so what you're saying is, if I stand in front of a fake plane out there, that's not real. That's not, <laughs> yeah. No? What's Grant? What's Grant say? You can fake a Lambo, but you can't fake a jet. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, actually, you could because I see I see this out there all the time, yeah. and it's it's about guys. This this is what and who you want to follow. Um, you want to follow people like Ben, people are in the business doing it day in and day out. People who have not, you know, so like me, who has not been born this way. I wasn't born rich. I wasn't born with all this money at me. I didn't have family handing me money. 
it's I learned how to, I had to learn how to do it, just like Ben had to learn how to do it. I mean, yeah. Change his field, change his mindset, put help his wife go through school while he was busting his horns, and then just put something out there and, and got in business with somebody who gave him an opportunity, and he sees that opportunity because most people will be like, well, I would love to do this, but I don't have money. Not even think, hey, how can I raise money, right? He came to someone like me. He probably went to a couple other guys with money. And what we did, we were raising money. We were partnering with Ben. So I was raising money at 6 to 8%. And then Ben's giving me 50% of the deal, and I'm paying out my investors. And I'm making a ton of money. I'm just arbitraging money to the point I said, Ben, you, you can crush this business. You'll never have a problem raising money if you start presenting your deals the right way. Yeah. The problem in the beginning, I remember, it was just like, oh, I need money. I got deals. I need money. What do you want to do? How do we do this? Right. And then once you start learning how to present, and I think that was the most important thing for you with the training, is learning how to present your deals the right way. Yeah. Right? Never ask you for money and let people just say, how do I fund your deals? I think that was a, a, a big part of it for you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I, I think uh, if I can uh, shower you with a bit of praise there, I mean, that that is a, a good thing about Dan is that he has a high level of ethics where he didn't have to like sit me down and say, dude, you're like overpaying me. You know, he could have just been that guy is like, Hey, I'm going to continue to, this is amazing. I'm, I'm making great money here and I'm having to do nothing. So, I mean, I, I'm so thankful for that because you know, it, it literally, if you learn how to do things the right way, like it could be the difference between you making thousands of dollars to someday making millions of dollars. So, Exactly. And I truly believe that's where people go from good to great. And uh, it's it's all in, I'm going to give 100% of this to mindset. It's most people have a scarcity belief. Yeah. Um, they have a scarcity mindset, like, hey, I'm not going to share with people because there's competition, right? Yeah. And uh, my friend Joel says co-opetition, which I love his term. I got to give credit for that. Joel Marco says that. But it's, you know, Guys, if I share this with, if I didn't share this with Ben and I let him keep paying me like this, I don't believe he would have been in the business very long because he would have burnt out. He wasn't going to make nearly the money he's making now. He wouldn't have been, he's now hired people. He's got a team around him. He's got a full fledged business now. And now they're buying hundreds of properties sometimes at a time they're taken down. And I don't believe he would have ever been able to do that, right? And then he would have had to base his business off me raising money. What if I went in a different direction, right? Um, and I believe that me and Ben, one is, I, I consider one of my closest friends in the business. I really do. He's, and I always talk about power of six. He's somebody I would consider that be on my, he would be like on my board of directors. Someone that he can give me ideas. He's just not a student, but he's, you know, that's just, that was just a student of how to raise private money the way I do. That's, that's it. But he, Ben has taught me so much in life, so much in business, so much in mindset that I can never repay him for that. And that might not have happened. If I was looking out for myself, um, and I'm sure that there's going to be a time that Ben and I are going to get together and say, Ben's going to say, Hey, I got this huge deal. Or I'm going to say, Hey, Ben, I got this huge deal. And maybe I don't have money at the time. Maybe I don't have time to go out raise. Let's raise it together. Let's do this deal together. And he's somebody I can trust. He, I'm somebody I'm sure you can trust. And that's what it's about, guys. That's what's it's building this together. It's, it sucks to build things on your own. It sucks to have that scarcity mindset where you just try to do everything on your own. And I mean, I learned that from one of my mentors, you know, Mark Evans, he taught me that. And you know, I used to think the same thing. Like, I got to do everything on my own. And uh, it's, it's not that way. It's really not. And Ben, you're, you're like a master of mindset now. I'll tell you that. I mean, you, you've, you've proven that. You really have. And you're, one of the things you work on a lot is your mindset. I mean, you brought me to the Arate Syndicate. And we went to that together. And, and, you know, you got me listening to Andy Frisella. Um, yeah. that was, you got me now. I, my, now my son is listening to that. Oh, nice. Uh, he, was, he was traveling the other day and he sends me a screenshot of all he's on the plane. Look, look who's listening to. So like, you, like you've helped my family as much as I hope I've helped you. So that's what it's, that's what it's really about. So when I, I'm telling people the training, I can't get, it's 14, it's over $14,000 in value. I sold stuff separately. I'm literally handing it to people for almost nothing. I tell people, if you raise hard money, I'm going to charge you two to four points on every deal for six months. I'm going to charge you from 10 to 14%, two to four points, depending on your experience, depending on what you put in a deal. I'm going to require you to do this, this, and this, and this. If you just do nothing else but to save those points out there, you just, you know, most deals are two to $300,000 loans. Yeah. If you save yourself four to six grand, up to 12 grand, if you look at it like that and you don't think that you should be raising money, um, you're, you're hugely mistaken. And let me just tell you, and you know, I've got the board back here. I'm not going to start doing trainings right now on this because I have you on 
But some of the napkin presentations we talk about, when you raise money, I know I raise it at like 6 to 8%, and I raise it for three to five years, right? Some people 12 months, but I tell people three to five years because most of my money comes from self-directed IRAs, solo 401ks, where people can't really touch the money until they're 59 and a half anyway. But when you raise money like that, and you're not under the gun to, to be out of a deal in six months, how powerful is that for what you could do in your deals? Buying an asset, fixing it, sell a financing it, doing collateral assignments, doing partials. How beneficial has that part been for you in your business uh, on the on the um, the actual, you know, if you weren't able to raise money, you had to use hard money for what you're doing. How okay. beneficial has that been for you? It'd be impossible. I mean, because the way that we're buying property, uh, if, if we hadn't figured out how to effectively raise private money, we just wouldn't be able to do what we do. So hard money, they want too much, and not only just in terms of like the cost of it, but like, you know, the time. They can't move, you know, almost with impunity to be able to go get a deal just as quickly as they want. So you, you know as well as I do, if a bank presents you a deal, you've got like a minute to make a decision on that before they're going to the next door. So, you know, you can't do that with hard money. You have to have private money behind you and, and already in place. So you can, when you identify a deal, you can do it very quickly. And now we're just starting to, you know, we're getting seasoning on our notes where we're starting to do partials. And, you know, we just went through last week and we're going to recapture, you know, 20, 30 grand in a partial sale. And it's like, oh my God, this is like free money. You know, so it cost us nothing. So it was all from our private money person that we paid back. And now this is just money to us. So it's amazing what it can do. And it, you're totally right. I mean, if you can't justify investing in yourself, you'll never make it anyways. I mean, no. it's just not going to work out. So that's, my, that's what I say. If you, if you don't invest in yourself, you're probably in the wrong business. Um, and like I said, if, if, if even, you know, a couple thousand dollars or, or 10, $20,000, uh, it, it's not something you're willing to invest in yourself to, to increase your business. Well, then you're probably, you know, why you're into this business anyway? Why, you, you know, unless you're great at raising money already, or unless you're great at finding deals already. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I just call it, I just say it's a fictional life that people are living, you know, they're lying to themselves or I see posts on there. Hey, you don't need any, you don't need to spend any money on anybody. And I saw laughing and I'm like, well, you're telling this in a group of people who have done nothing but failed at what they've done. And you don't know who people are in it. And if they don't invest in themselves to do it the right way, I mean, geez, you invested in yourself and you raised a brand new money, about $4 million. Yeah. And I tell, I tell my students, like, guys, if you're a fix and flipper, you literally don't even need, you probably only need 500,000 to a million dollars and you're done. Because how many deals are you going to do at the same time anyway? Right? If you're only going to do one, two, three houses at a time, how much do you need? You don't need a ridiculous, I mean, I only have, I always thought, I only have 42 investors on my list. That's it. 42. That's yeah. it. I don't have hundreds like other people have, but I have more money than I know what to do with right now in private money, right? More money than deals. That's just the way it is. Yeah. Um, so I don't go out and I don't, I don't, I don't raise a lot of money. You know, I just use the people I really work with that I have a relationship with. One is, is a loyalty thing. Why should I go out and bring new money until I use theirs? Right. It's a loyalty sure. thing. For me. So, and I'm sure you're in the same boat right now. You're pretty much in that same boat. Yeah, totally. I mean, we, we love to work with our people that we're working with. It's just relationships, and that relationship just continues to build and build and build. You know, the more the more we're talking about like, eighteen months for you. you yeah, know, I'm at twenty nine years, eighteen months. So people think <clears throat> that they can't do it, and it's a mindset thing. And I just want everyone to see that someone who eighteen months ago didn't feel comfortable raising any money himself, he was giving away the farm, giving away. And I talk about this all the time, giving away his whole business to guys like myself and probably some other investors. Um, <clears throat> And now he's raising money and he's just, he's created a, an amazing business. I mean, done over 400 deals, I think it was something like that. You're at right around 400 deals already. Yeah. And these aren't 400 doors in a multifamily. These are 400 deals. Yeah. Right. 400 deals. And you get, and I always talk about vision. You don't need to be Ben Fredericks. You don't need to do 400 deals. You don't need to be Dan Zapowski. You don't need to have over 600 doors. You need to be yourself. You need to do one stop or one deal. Right. right. Do one deal. Right. Ben raised one hundred forty thousand dollars to start. Then he raised five hundred grand in the program. Then he raised another five hundred grand from the same person in the program. So within within four to six months, I think he said he was at over a million dollars he raised. But you know, one hundred forty thousand seemed like a lot for him. And by actually doing what we told him to do, 
and putting out there what he does, he was actually able to raise money. And I'll tell you this, and I know it's probably the same with you. I mean, you said you got it from your partner's father. Um, but most of my students, when they start out, they raise money without knowing it. They have no idea they're going to do it. But when we go through the training step by step, and when I have them take, I say, okay, send out the email now. And, and it just happens to a friend of mine, or an investor, I mean, student of mine, Logan Hassinger, he sent out his email now, boom, a guy hit him back. I didn't even know you were doing this. Let's get together. <laughs> exactly. and, and I have money for you. Now, will he finalize and, and get the money if he has a deal? Once he has a deal, he'll have money from him. But he had, didn't even, he, he had like 80 something names. He sent, I made him send out an email. He was so timid to send it out. He sent it out. While we were on the call, he got it. I have, like I said, 42 investors, lenders. I had a deal I closed in uh, North Carolina last week. I said, I took one of my students that was so timid to send out an email. I said, let's send this out. We sent it out. 42 investors. 24 the first day said they were interested in the deal. The second day, I had another two. Okay, that was 26 out of 42 right there on the spot like that. But it's, like you said, I think the important thing is, is putting this out there, presenting it the right way, and letting people know what you do. Yeah. So. Yeah, and the biggest piece, too, I think is, and I just heard, I literally just heard this this morning from Jocko Willink, is discipline. Everything you want is tied to discipline in one way or another. It could be the, the money you make. It could be, you know, the, uh, the fitness that you have. It could be relationships. All of those things are going to require discipline. So most people, they won't spend the 997, which, by the way, is you should raise the price on that, man. Like, seriously. That yeah, is yeah, that's that's stupid good. cheap. And if somebody can't afford they people can afford 997. First of all, if you can't raise 997, you need to get. You need to figure out a way to raise the 997. You know what's funny? I told you we had. I think we have close to 1,400 people in the group. I think over 90 percent of them, like 92 percent. Yeah. One of their answers was the hardest thing to have trouble is raising money. So I spoke to talk my my marketing. I said we hate doing sales. We're not we're not lowering it anymore. I said listen. Yeah. We we sold a lot of these courses, and now I've also done a lot of one on. I've done. I'm finishing up my first round of one on one trainings for three months. That's going to go to two months from now on. Three months is actually a long time. Um, and people pay some good money for that. But I said, let's do something where everybody's complaining about this. We have all the new people in the group. Let's do something where we and, – and, and we went back and forth. I'm like, if they can't afford 987, they probably shouldn't be in the business. But I said, let's give them some. Let's do it one last time. We lowered the price last week to 497. We said up to 20 people max. Yeah. 20 people didn't take advantage, I think. 13 might have taken advantage. Right? And like I don't carry the way. I'm not here to sell for trainings. But I had people, I had like three or four people. So it ended on Friday at 11.59 Eastern time. On Saturday, we had three or four people hit us up, and they're like, well, when he lowers the price again, we'll buy it. I'm like, there's no way. Yeah. In fact, I might raise it right now. There is no way because you will never take action. Your mindset is wrong. You're probably not the right fit for the training anyway. And would you – I wouldn't, these are, and then, you know how many times people have gone to training, come to me to raise money, and I've actually funded their deals because they've done it the right way. Yeah. So mindset is everything. So yeah. you'd rather go out there and, and not learn the right way to raise money, not protect your investors, not have be showcased on our program like, like you are, Ben. I mean, it's just, and not have me possibly fund your deal because you're worried, and you, you couldn't spend 497 You waited to take action. And I always, I want to tell them, I'm like, next time I, I do a training, or I'm speaking as a keynote speaker on action taking, you want to be in the front row because you need to be involved. That's the only way you're going to take care of your investors. Yeah. That's the only way you're going to build your business. And that's what I love about someone like you is, is you, you took action. But not only did you take action and jump into the training right without even asking questions, but you actually went through it and actually took action on each step. And the people that have gone through it, they don't need my one-on-one. -on -one. They just get the online training and they take action on their own and – you might not have done everything, but you did bits and pieces of it. And like you said, there's one, there's always going to be one or two golden nuggets. And just that brochure alone that you have, um, I mean, you, you see Ed Pugh's put his up. Again. Yeah. Logan Astor's put his up. Jake Penny's put his up. These guys have put theirs up. Um, uh, Jeremy Bowers put theirs up. And they've raised a ton of money. Yeah. And I'm going to have them on this show talking about what they've done too. And these are some successful people. That's Ed, good. I mean, yeah, I know. I've known Ed Pugh a while, and, like, he's a player. So, like, if, if Ed Pugh is a guy that if he's learning something from Dan that he's implementing into his business, that means you should be doing it because he's a guy that is doing also a ton of deals. 
So, yeah, he's, very, he's doing a lot of similar stuff that you're doing. He's getting bank owned properties. Yeah. He's crushing it. And he flew in here. He paid me. He said, I'm going to pay you for your time. He flew in here. We sat down. We spent way more time than, than we planned. But, you know, why? Because he was taking action. And he got that deal funded. He funded a huge deal. And he just had that issue of, of okay, I can get these deals. I could raise money, but I couldn't raise this kind of money. I couldn't yeah. get to that next level. Yeah. So uh, I'm glad. I think he's spoken to you too, and you probably helped him a lot as well with his mindset. No, I I actually learned a ton from them. So him and his brother, I mean, they totally. basically their their group got me started in on the path. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah. I didn't know that. I'm so thankful I, to actually, those guys. I actually went out because I bought a property. I, I just bought a property in Charlotte last week. Yeah. And I went out there. I was I was checking out the market, doing my emerging market, doing my research. Meeting with property managers, a bunch of them, meeting with contractors, meeting with project managers, meeting, meeting with realtors. And uh, I did. I, I told them, I said, I'm going to do it around your group. So I got to join his group. Yeah. It was event. It was phenomenal. I mean, it, th those two are just, Taylor and Ed are just crushing it out there, yeah. just like you are. And I'm just like, I'm blown away at that. I've even been a part of what you're doing, with what they're doing, what all the guys are doing. Now, I want to, I think we got really, I think. Yeah, I'm hoping everyone gets a lot out of what you're doing here. But the, the couple questions I get asked, I just recently got asked this on a podcast, and I think it's so important because it's, you know, the um, the basics of a business are nothing crazy, right? What I teach in raising private money or becoming the bank and passive wealth and building a rental portfolio, I mean, that you probably could learn along the way. And, but the biggest thing you can't learn is um, is mindset and core values. Yeah. What are, other than money, what are, give me your top three core values you, you either have in your, your personal or your business life that you could share, that, that you would share with, with generations coming through the ranks today. Yeah. Well, I think um, core values are something I never really thought of until, you know, I got into RT, um, but which is kind of weird because I grew up, I was a Boy Scout, you know, went all the way through. Yeah, exactly. So I went through Boy Scouts and, best. you know, they have... Uh, that entire thing, you know, do a good turn daily and all that kind of stuff. So, but I didn't really think about it much as an adult. So some of the, the, the basic core values that I've embraced, you know, just over the last several years are I accept responsibility for everything. So nothing is happening to me. It's a result of something I've done or I've not done. So if you start to look at, you know, any situation that you're in, as I accept responsibility for this, it really changes, you know, because a lot of people love to play the blame game, right? So it's like, oh, it's Dan's fault. He, sh he should have done this. He should have done that. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't stomach being in that situation anymore. So I accept responsibility for everything. Um, probably secondary, I'm, I'm very intentional about what I do. My days start with purpose every single day. So that's just a, a, a very specific core value that I live with is just start every day intentionally. So my, my days are almost identical every single day. So it starts out with a three mile walk. I'm listening to podcasts, something on mindset, an audio book. You know, I'm getting back, I'm writing down my goals for the day, my targets and all the things I want to accomplish. So that's, that's probably um, the second piece. And then the third piece is, you know, make an impact. So how can I impact the world today? How can I make an impact with my daughter? How can I make an impact uh, with my family? How can I make an impact with my team? How can I make an impact with our business? So if I start looking for ways to help others that is all outside of myself, then, I, like I said before, I'm a big believer in law of attraction. It's going to come back. So certainly does. that's probably my, my top three. Certainly does. Oh, man, I was... That was pretty powerful, and I, I love them. I think they were very aligned with that, too. And I think we uh, not only do we say that, and I have them written down, and I keep I keep theirs on my desk all the time. It's yeah. always on top of my desk. Every day, I always put papers underneath it. That goes on top of my desk. So I sit down, I look at it, and it makes me remember. However yeah. you do it, you put it on your a postcard. You can put it in your bathroom. You can put it in your car. Whatever it is, you should have your core values or your mentor's core values, something in front of your face. But you really need to not copy them. You really need to write your it's so important to have that. Yeah. Um, so I, I appreciate you sharing that. And I think that's what changes people's lives. And that's what changes their business business and personal lives to go from good to great once they 
have those core values. And I know you're probably in the same boat as me. It's not always easy, right? You know, we talk about not blaming other people, take responsibility for yourself. It's yeah. so easy to fall back and we have to constantly, you know, people think that they see us from the outside in and they say, wow, they're very successful. Uh, they have a great life. They're, and you know, it's, it's a job, it's work. It's not easy for us to do this day in and day out. Making money might be easy, but everything else that comes, you know, the stress, the time, the family, the, you know, the outside um, influences where people, you know, we can't control the actions they take and we can't do this ourselves. So the contractors, the property managers, the realtors, yeah. private investors, whatever it is, there's always something that comes up. And uh, we're just problem solvers. That's what I think we are. Yeah. We're, we're problem solvers. Yeah. Making, That's awesome. Making money so, is not easy. Like, it, it really isn't. So I know there's people out there that, that, that will preach, oh, it's so easy, it's so easy. It's not. I mean, anybody that makes money will tell you that, granted, we're not digging ditches. You know what I'm saying? We're not, you know, blue-collar guys out there busting our humps, like, you know, doing manual labor. But right. it's not easy. I mean, it's just a different kind of hard. But if you embrace the hardness of it as it being what makes it great, then it'll become enjoyable. So, and that's, again, that's why I say it's a game for me. I, I, I just embrace it. And if I accept responsibility that I'm losing the game and there's something I can fix in myself, then that's what I'm going to do. Awesome. That is freaking awesome. Now, Ben, I know people are, you know, obviously we're doing this in the afternoon. A lot of people are probably working now. A lot of people can't ask questions right now because they, because they're working. I mean, we got some great comments here. Um, how do people follow you? I know you have a group. How do they reach out to you? I don't think you want to hand out your cell phone number, but because um, I, I used to do that on podcasts and I get blasted. But <laughs> how, how do people reach out to you um, if they want to follow you? Sure. You know, um, you have, I know you have um, you do emails. You you have a Facebook group. Um, just just let people know. Yeah. That, follow uh, you. Cause you can connect with cool. me on Facebook. I think I'm at forty two hundred friends now on Facebook. Um, yeah, something like that. But yeah, I still got room to accept new people. Um, ben Fredericks is just my Facebook. And then uh, if you want to connect with our business, see some of our properties and, you know, notes and things that we do, uh, you can find us on uh, Instagram, which is just Odell Barnes REO. And then also our, uh, we have a Facebook group, which is Odell Barnes REO Investors. So you can okay. go check that Odell. out as well. Odell. Odell Barnes REO, REO. Investors. Investors. On Facebook. Yep. Okay, good. Is is there any any other parting words you want to share with anybody? That, that, that you, wise wisdom from Ben Fredericks? I, I, I don't know if I've got any left, but I would just tell you, like, it, the biggest thing is if you're thinking about hooking up with Dan, do it. Like, just like oh. uh, Ed did, and you know, I flew to Philly to meet with Dan, and, you know, we I got some good pizza out of the deal. Nice glass of wine, you know, but more than that, I got friendship. I got a, a great relationship on, on from a business standpoint. Dan's helped me not beyond private money, just in, you know, helping me identify little areas in my business that we could improve. And, you know, I, I, but don't, if you're not going to take action behind it, don't do it. Like that's all there is. And exactly. that, and if you know that to be true about yourself, you have to be introspective enough to look at yourself and say, what is it that I need to change about myself? And it's probably discipline. That's all it's going to come down to. Awesome. This is this is great conversation. I know you're busy and you're swamped right now, and I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to do this and share with the group. Anytime guys, you do, And if you guys want to follow Ben, jump on his Facebook page, jump on his Instagram, sign up for his mailing list. He gives a ton. And when you get those emails, check him out. He has a ton of knowledge. He's constantly sharing his wisdom with people. And uh, maybe you could see him on the circuit uh, when he's out by you. And I appreciate you, Ben. Thanks so much. Thank you, brother. Take care. It's my pleasure. Bye -bye. How's it going?
Okay. Well, what can I do to help you? Right. 